Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. I believe in being self-sufficient, or at least as much as possible. And so I love alternative energy. You've probably seen some of my projects from a few years back. I've been involved in solar, wind, uh, even underwater hydro off the, uh, for current things. I love alternative energy. And so Alex also loves alternative energy, probably even more than I do. He's been doing all sorts of windmills and stuff, and I've made lots of 3D printed windmill files and stuff available for you guys as well at Mike'sInventions.com. And I've never really, until now, tried to actually get usable power out of them. This is because Alex really wants to use windmills to make things. However, I have recently decided to abandon all my windmill efforts. And this video is going to show you why. The idea, of course, behind wind power is to capture the energy from the wind. Wind is a moving fluid. Any moving fluid has the ability to do work. What we want it to do, of course, in our case, is spin blades. This windmill here, which has been through several hubs, has a, this is the biggest one I've ever made. It's got a 64 inch diameter rotor, and Alex was really hoping we could use this for something meaningful. We've got this 350 watt uh, this, of course, is just a test pole here, just so I can show you for the purposes of the video. This was off of Banggood. It's a motor generator, permanent magnet, DC, 24 volt thing. Problem is, this thing goes at 2700 RPMs, is what it's rated at. We, of course, can't test this windmill up to a speed that high. So rather than fiddle with any sorts of gearing or anything like that, what we wanted to do was just hook it up direct drive on this. Uh, this is probably the fifth different hub that these blades have been through. Each of these blades was laser cut several years ago on a universal laser systems. Um, what was it, 150 watt laser. And I think these look really, really nice. This is definitely my favorite windmill that I've made. But we were really disappointed when we did this test just exactly how little power we actually got. And so let me show you the test setup here, what we did. You can see these numbers are absolutely abysmal. Now I wouldn't spin this any faster than I'm spinning it right now, just for safety reasons. I don't think this thing could take much anymore, but you can see that we're getting abysmal numbers, less than an amp and slightly over a single volt at what I would consider to be the maximum speed of this. And so even if we got this thing going full speed, I don't think it would do a whole lot better. And so like usual, I needed to show Alex why the results were what they were. And so I went over to Excel, fired that up, and did some engineering. When you've got a windmill, the point is to capture the airstream and extract the energy from that. Any moving fluid has the ability to do work. So the equation for energy, ordinarily, is one half mv. Let me actually, let's do this on the board. And I'm gonna show you why I decided to abandon all of my windmill projects. Wind, like any moving fluid, has some energy. Ordinarily, energy is one half mv squared. And so now for a fluid though, what we need is a mass flow rate. Because the idea is we've got this, this rotor diameter, so you've got the area of this, and you've got the density of a fluid. So this equation, for our purposes, becomes E equals one half rho a v squared. Rho is the density of air. I'm going to try to do this in both units because I know a lot of you are not United States based people. And so I, I really want to try to uh, make this as easy as possible for everybody. The density of air at STP is going to be, um, well, it's, point, it's very, very insignificant here. 0 0.0024 slug per cubic feet, uh, which is 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. Sounds like an E3 flying overhead. So we've got our density. The area is the capture area of our rotors. In this case, it's about 64 inches. 60 <laughs> inches. 64 inches. Area for my windmill, uh, I already calculated this and I know this is 22.3 square feet which happens to be uh, 2.1 square meters. So here we've got the English and the Imperial units like I promised. Rho and A, V, 
Normally we do wind speed around here in miles per hour. You guys would do it in kilometers per hour, perhaps. But that, of course, has to be converted to feet per second. In order to convert miles per hour to feet per second, you take miles per hour, multiply that by feet over seconds, 5,280 over 3,600. It's about 1.5, 1 1.4 uh, for your conversion. But So the thing to remember, though, when you're calculating this is you've got to keep all your units consistent. And so let me actually work through it. Let me, let me build a table here on the board and show you why I abandon wind power for my home. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Whew. That was a lot of math. And uh, see, it kind of, I'm not exactly straight across there anyway. So here we've got our units for power in English units, which is foot pounds per second. Foot pounds per second, 550 foot pounds per second is one horsepower. You can see we're nowhere near that. For you metric people, there's another unit that even we understand. So what is the unit for metric power? And there you have it. You can see here, we're also, we can only get 150, well, there are, we can't get, there are 150 watts in that amount of air flowing at an average of 11 miles per hour. You can't extract all of the energy that's in the wind. Imagine this. Well, here, don't imagine it. I'm just, let's do this. Let me uh, get this here and try not to hit myself in the face. Turn it on its side like so, and we'll do this. So. You've got all this air coming this way, right? Ideally, we would like to extract all the energy from the air, but we can't. Because if we did, that would mean that as soon as the air hit these blades, on this side, the air would be stopped, right? That would be amazing if you could extract all the air. It comes in, it's moving, it's moving, it goes through the blades, these spin, and the air stops on the back side. That means we got all its energy. But we can't do that. Because if the air on this side is stopped, then the air on this side can no longer get through and we know the air has to keep flowing. So we can't extract all of the energy that's in that air anyway. Well, how much can we extract? I'm glad you asked. Turns out the maximum we can get is only 16 27ths. That's a wonderful fraction. It has to do with squares and cubes, though. We can only get 20, 16 27ths, which is 59%. Uh, now, of course, that's a theoretical maximum. When was the last time we humans could extract the theoretical maximum of anything? Exactly. So say if my whole system, we put other losses into it and we're only 75% efficient or so, well, when you multiply a fraction times a fraction, it gets even smaller. And so if we were, let's say where our efficiency for the system is 75%, that equates to 44% overall efficiency, or that's, I mean, that's all we can get. So let's make another column here with our trusty TI-89 and see what we can expect to get out of this windmill. And these numbers are even worse. Basically no power. At my average wind speed, I'm only gonna get 67 watts. Are you kidding me? For something this big? There's no way. It would take a ridiculously huge windmill to even just get a thousand watts, something like 24 feet in my case. And there's no way the HOA would ever allow that. I had to jump through a ton of hoops just to get this 10 foot tall shop built. So the windmill is definitely out of the question. And this is why I have abandoned all of my windmill projects. There's simply not enough energy available in the amount of wind with the space I've got to make it worth it. And so this is a word of caution then for those of you that are looking for commercial, you know, small scale windmills. A lot of them say they have a low cut in speed, right? This is the speed at which they start to spin and make electricity. Well, I mean, you gotta have a minimum speed because there's inertia in the blades and things. They're not just gonna, you know, that's not gonna start it. So they have, they're advertising, we got a low cut in speed, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter because if you've got a windmill that's only this big, 
The cutting speed could be a thousand and there's simply not enough energy available in that size, in that amount of wind to capture effectively. And so that's why I'm, that's why the windmills in the fields are so darn huge. Because yes, if you do scale it up with 100 foot long, 100, 100 120 foot long blades, yes, then that capture area times your average wind speed, yeah, you can get 2 million watts out of something like that. But on a small scale like this with your average wind, it's just not going to happen. And so if only our fluid were roughly 800 times denser, we might be able to do something. But you know what? That's another video. So you can see there's simply not enough energy available in this amount of air moving this fast to extract any meaningful amount of power, which is why I have decided to stop all of my windmill efforts and focus on something more realistic. Now, people use the terms energy and power interchangeably, and they're not. Energy is the ability to do work. Work is kilogram meters or foot pounds. You know, if you, if you push a block, uh, certain, the, let's say a block weighs 10 pounds, you push it five feet, well, you've done 50 foot pounds worth of work. Of course, power, foot pounds per second and watts, that's power, that's the rate at which you do work. And so, the faster you do something, of course, you're gonna need more, more power. And so the power equation is a lot like the energy equation, except here, E becomes P, let's get rid of that line, and this becomes cubed. So you can see the area of your windmill increases with the radius squared, so that goes up quickly, but you get even more as the velocity goes up. See how these numbers, you get 0 0.1, 0 0.9, then all of a sudden you jump to three, because as you double your wind speed from here, well, from here to here, which I didn't show, but if you double your wind speed, your power is gonna go up by two to the third, or eight. And so you get a lot more bang for your buck with speed than you do area. But your kind of speed is fixed, and so there's not much we can do about that. But you can see, these numbers are really, really bad. So hopefully I've saved you a couple bucks, and maybe you won't actually go out and spend that money on your 150 watt turbine. So, at the very least though, you know how to do some math, and you know the difference between energy and power. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.